when people think of flooding here in Wisconsin. Now, the most recent indelible image is this one, that home tumbling into Lake Delton back in 2008. But for folks with a longer memory, 1993 stands out. During May and June of that year, two-thirds of this state flooded. News 3 investigative reporter Adam Schrager joins us with the beginning of a two-part series trying to answer the question, could the flood of the century happen again, Adam? Well, Eric, I was working in La Crosse back in 93, and the flooding along the Mississippi River further downstream would end up being devastating. My father-in-law found his farm under a few feet of water. When the rivers finally went down here in the state, Wisconsin faced a billion dollars in losses, but it was the death of a 12-year-old boy that led to Wisconsin's greatest change some 20 years later. One visit to Clark's Creek in Sauk County and you almost want to send its location to the parent of every fussy baby in Wisconsin. It's pretty quiet. I mean, people like this running babbling brook in front of their house. Sauk County Lieutenant Terry Spencer lives just up the hill off Highway 113. I still drive through here. But his memories aren't so idyllic. You couldn't see. It was, at the time, it was raining so hard, you just couldn't see. On June 17, 1993, the Baraboo area received 14 inches of rain. Well, that night stands out. 14 inches. This was a very chaotic scene. Spencer's family has been involved in law enforcement since FDR was president, yet nothing prepared him for the state in which he found 12-year-old Ryan Long. Personally, this is probably the worst thing I've ever seen. Ryan was trapped in his older brother's Toyota Celica with a raging creek between him and Spencer for three hours. Excuse me. I, I think that sticks out the most is that we could see the young man, but we couldn't get to him. Ryan would be the only fatality. The legacy he left is visible today. The extent of the flooding and the duration were something we have never seen before. Gary Heinrichs participated in the Department of Natural Resources' response to the 93 floods. He says the campground Ryan and his brother were trying to escape from that night was in a floodplain, but likely few people there knew anything about it. People were trapped in the campground, people were climbing trees, and it was a pretty ugly incident. The DNR knew it needed to better map Wisconsin's floodplains, especially those areas that draw more people, like these along the Rock River. We have to be able to tell people where the dangerous areas are. Look at this side-by-side -side mapping of the Clark Creek area. The original from 2001 is... Basically black lines on a white background. In the more modern version from a couple of years ago, you can see homes, properties, and their relation to the floodplain. Technology does make a difference that we can better map flood risk areas, and we can provide better warning, more warning to folks in map floodplain areas. He knows there will always be doubters, people who just don't believe they'll ever be flooded. But human nature does not defeat mother nature in the floodplain without maps. It really makes a difference when people are looking at those maps, judging those risks. We call it Clark Creek, I called it Ryan's Creek. Lieutenant Terry Spencer has responded to numerous floods since 1993 alongside this body of water. As far as lessons learned, we're better prepared today than we were 20 years ago. Better prepared in part because of the memories he and others share of the worst flood in state history. Every time I drive past that guardrail and look at that, I can see the car still sitting there. And I can still see Ryan. The DNR has mapped and remapped most of the state's more populous areas, but thousands of floodplains up north remain unmapped and potentially dangerous. If you're interested in looking up a certain location in the state, the DNR's website does have its latest floodplain maps online. And coming up tomorrow night at 10, Eric, we're going to look at the other major recommendation from 20 years ago, which is basically how to try and prevent this flooding from happening in the first place. We look forward to that. Adam Schrager reporting. Adam, thank you. Thank you.